OK, Brad, it's the press conference I'm sure you've been, you've been thinking about for a little while now. Yeah. It didn't go your way. You were one minute away, potentially, from, from winning that comeback fight, and it, it just didn't quite go your way for you. What, what are the overriding emotions now you know that you've laid your hat down in the octagon and walked away from that cage for the final time? It just shows, basically, I made the right decision before going into this fight. I was winning the fight for 14 minutes, and, and then I got uh, a head kick where, to be honest, the younger me would have chewed that up and just carried on going, you know? But, you know, so definitely, it's definitely the right decision. Uh, obviously, it's not the fairy tale ending that myself and probably everybody else have wanted. I think everyone in there was rooting for me to win, apart from Marlon and his corner, you know, so but I'm happy for him, you know, he, he gets to feed these kids and, uh, and yeah. Talk to us about the walkout because it's a little bit special. You all, your, your walkout is always special to the British fans, but we could see on the screens back here that it was, you were trying to take it in, but also it looked like emotion was just getting the better of you as you, as you made it to the cage there. Yeah, this whole week has been just crazy emotion, you know, like, Whatever I had throughout my career, tenfold. You know, it's been really the support I've got from the, from, from the press, the fans, the the, the staff. It's been just been mind blowing. You know, and I'm forever grateful for this sport and the UFC to give me a platform to. You know, when I say when I first started fighting, I fought in Portsmouth Pier for like I didn't even get paid. I, get, I just I got a free table for my friends to watch me fight. You know. I never thought in a million years one this sport would be where it is today. Well, actually, I did. I knew the sport would be great, but I didn't think in my my career or my even my lifetime that we'd be where we are today with this sport. It's, 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 it's been amazing, and, and it's been an absolute roller coaster, you know, for me and my fans. You know, it's not easy being a picket support, I tell you. And as you walk away from this, the sport from a, a competition standpoint, what will be the abiding memories that you take and when you, when you bring up your young family and you start to tell tales of when dad used to step in the octagon and fight, what will be those, those standout moments that you look back on with particular pride? Well, just, just, just the way I fight like I did tonight. I go out on my shield, you know. I, I could have played it really safe in that third round. I knew I won the first two rounds. I could have just tried to get a take down and lay on, lay on top of him. But, you know, like I always do, uh, you know, I live by the sword, die by the sword and, and you know, yeah, I did do that for the fans, and, and you know, not anymore, but, <laughs> but yeah. Pickett, just talk a little bit. You obviously you said how emotional the run-up to this fight was for you. You shared your time at ATT with some of the new wave of British fighters. Just talk about, you know, what that experience was like, and how emotional was it for you to say goodbye to the guys at ATT? It is, it's emotional for me to say goodbye to just the sport in general, you know, I I, like I say, I love this sport, it's helped me provide for my family for, for many years, um, but I've left the sport in a really, really good spot, you just saw tonight some, some great young talent, Arnold Allen, you know, uh, and Mark Dear Casey, you know, two studs, you know, uh, uh, you know in, and Jimmy Manawa tonight, you know, headlining, and when the UK MMA scene is in a great place, and you know, and uh, uh, if I've been some sort of part of it throughout my career, I, I, I'm happy, you know. And what will you do now in your retired life? Do you want to stay part of this sport in, in some way? This, this sport's my life. I'd love to stay in, in part with this sport, you know, in, in to what degree. Uh, one of my passions would be is to open my own gym in South London and, and pass my knowledge on to the young, inspiring athletes. And also, I love this company, so... I don't know, I'll maybe speak to the right people and see if there's somewhere. Uh, I mean, I, I just love this sport. It sports my life, and, and I would definitely not leave this sport. So, you know, so yeah, you know, I take a little bit of time to reflect, and, and uh, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, I run my own fight promotion as well, because I, I think I owe it to, to myself and the sport in general to, to the feedback. So I have, I have my own show called Rise of Champions. You know, I, I'll concentrate a bit more on that now, which I've had to put on a bit of hold because I've been in back-to-back -back fights 
So now, now I, have a bit, I have a lot more time on my hands, you know. So I do that. I, I run a podcast as well called The One Bunch Podcast with Brian Lacey. And, uh, yeah, I do other things. I coach a thing called Winter Warrior, which uh, left the finale tomorrow night, tomorrow. So I'm going to go to that. Yeah, so I've got a lot of things going on and keeping mes- myself busy. But literally everything's to do with this sport. Any regrets? Zero regrets. I'm not one of those. I always look forward, you know. I, I don't dwell on the past, you know. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. You know, I've done everything I could in my career to try and be number one in the world. And that was my decision going into tonight, the reason, reason I decided to hang up my gloves. Even if I won tonight, I would have hung, my, uh, hung up anyway. It's because I've gone as far as I can with the sport, and I'm not here just to make up the numbers, you know. Uh, and I can see myself going down in rankings. So then I was like, oh, it's time for me to go, you know. And, uh, yeah, I, and like you saw tonight, I was winning the fight and, and ended up losing. So it's definitely the right decision. Thank you. Brad, I know you've mentioned about starting up a great British top team. Uh, your affiliation there with American top team means a lot to you. But if the UFC said, look, we'd like you to stick around, we'd like you to, to play an active role in developing the sport in Europe, would that be something you'd be interested in? Of course. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, <laughs> technically, I'm jobless, you know. So, yeah. So, I'm, I'm ready to listen to any offers on, on the table. And I, I say, you would definitely be involved within this sport. I lo- I love this sport and I owe a lot to uh, the sport, I keep saying, and yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, I'm just going to take a bit of time to, to just to chill out. I, my family's been amazing, my, my wife, Sarah, my, my son, buddy, you know. Leslie, yeah. what was going through your mind, you know, when you were well, making your way to the cage? Like they said before, you did look very emotional. Um, you know, is it something in the future that you hope you will come back and become a fight announcer? An- 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 Sorry, I could start again. <laughs> so I was just saying, um, like obviously Andreas was saying before, so you would definitely think about becoming a future fight analysis and working with the UFC. Uh, like I mean, I was saying, the UFC has been the best organization in the world by far, in the best sport in the world by far. You know, like I played many sports growing up. And, and for me, this is the best sport. If you want to challenge yourself, you know, this is the best sport to do. You know, I've been in team sports and you could be the best player on the pitch and, and lose a game. You could be the worst player and win a game. This one is all down to you. And yes, yeah, the biggest challenge. And I always love the challenge, you know. And like I said, the UFC, uh, Zufa, going from, from Reed Harris in the WEC with Sean Shelby going into the UFC with Dana White and the Fatigue, you know, uh, They've been amazing to work with, and, and everyone. I mean, like, I get on with everyone. The press, you know, the backstage staff in the UFC uh, is always is always been great. You know, I I just I love everyone. You know, so yeah. And looking back on your career, what has been your favourite moments? There's a few things, as in like when I started travelling the world, fighting. You know, I thought, I thought there were some cool things. I remember fighting on the beach in Bodog. You know, in Costa, on, in Costa Rica, that was that was great. You know, I mean, as soon as I started traveling, I, I wanted to fight in Vegas, being the fight fi- capital of the world. And Z- Zufa gave me that chance, signed me to the WC, and I made my debut there, uh, and I won by a proving necktie. That that was a special moment for me. And then I guess in the other Zufa moment would be uh, knocking out Yves Dubon you know, with a name like One Punch. You know, you gotta live up to it. And I did that night with a great upper guy in front of my not the, not my home town. Uh, fans, but my home country fans in Nottingham. Thank you. So, um, Brad, and you talk about giving back to the new generation. If you look back in your career, what, what is, the, like, if you have to pick, what is the one piece of advice that you should give, like, new up-and-coming fighters? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's changed. In like, like I said, when I first started, it wasn't a legitimate career path for young athletes. It was literally just having a have a few fights and you may uh, pick up a bit of money here and there. But now, yeah, if you take this sport seriously at, at a young age, where great athletes used to be, if it was good in this country, you go play football, you go play rugby. But now there's a legitimate career path for you with the UFC to go on and earn life-changing money and support your family. You know, so yeah, and the sport just scientifically has grown so. I've seen the sport grow so much. You know, 
it wasn't a sport when I started. It's a sport now, you know. So, yeah, young athletes, you know, take the, all I say is take the sport very seriously and it, it will serve you well. Brad, you were up two rounds uh, on two of the judges' scorecards, but it did seem like in the third you pressed, you, you, you pressed forward. It didn't pay off, but I wonder, you know, in hindsight, do you wish you would have maybe played it a little differently, or is it almost like a sore surprise that, you know, even being up two rounds to none, you, you pushed? It's me. It's my fighting style. I live by the sword, die by the sword. And, and I say I'll fight for the fans, you know. So I could have just maybe, I didn't have trouble taking him down when I wanted for a takedown. I could have just took him down and laid on him and make it boring. But, you know, that for me, I, I wanted to be in, in a typical... Brad Pickett fight, and a typical Brad Pickett fight would have been me get up from that and carry on fighting, you know. But unfortunately, obviously, uh, my age didn't let me get up as quick as I could, you know. I, I wish I said I said to the referee before the fight, let me go stiff, you know. I, I, and I felt I was okay a little bit, but obviously I have to look at her back. You know, I, I love Guam Warman, so I know he's got a job to do, and you know I got a loving son, so I want to make sure I can still speak to him, you know. Very nice. And, and I wonder, you know, you've gotten a lot of praise this week for how you handled yourself and, you know, announcing your retirement, getting to do it at home, just the way you handled the whole process. But you had a chance a year ago to walk out on a win. I wonder, is there any lesson you take out of that? I mean, is there a difference at the end of the day whether you walk out on a win or a loss? I think the outcome of tonight didn't really matter. You know, I made my decision uh, before. It would have been a great fairy tale ending for me, for me uh, to w walk out on a win. But you can tell that this is real life. It's not fairy tales, you know. So you have to be re really smart when you're going in, you know. Uh, I, I think last year when I fought and I nearly, I say I always say I, I wasn't in the sport just to make up numbers. And back then, if I'd have lost, I, 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 I would have retired. But you saw the relief in my face when I won. I'm like, holy crap! I'm I can stay in the sport now and, and like, you know, like stay on this roller coaster. But tonight, like I say, win, win, lose, draw, whatever, I, I was content. I was ready. I'm done. I, I, I've made my mind up, and I was really comfortable with, 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 with my decision, you know. So, uh, unfortunately, it didn't go my way tonight. But, you know, every, crowd, every uh, cloud has a silver lining. I, I, I'm too nice, I think. You know, I was just, it's a bit, also, I was thinking, ah, oh, I'm happy for him, you know, because I know he's got a daughter, wasn't very well, and, and stuff like that. So, at least he gets a bit more money to feed his daughter. I'm just, I'm just too nice thinking about other people, but, you know, I'm happy for him. Thank you, guys. What's up? Gunner, congratulations on, uh, on your win this evening. Might have been one of the best performances of your career. Uh, just got to ask, uh, how do you feel after putting on a display like that? Uh, feels great, man. The fight went well. Went my way, obviously. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was, a, it was a good first round as well, just getting a feel for it. and. Uh, I'm actually enjoying spending a little bit more time in the octagon than maybe some of my previous fights. I feel like I learned more. And the finish that you had was spectacular. You land the right hand, the kick lands. It looked like the, the knockout was there for the taking. Um, what's going through your mind at that point? Obviously, we, you know, we think of you as a gifted submission artist, but it looked like you could finish it. Instead, you, you basically pull him to the ground and finish him there. What's the thought process and the selection process as, as that's unfolding? Um... You know, at that point, there was a, it was just the, the most obvious, obvious opening for me, you know. It was just, I thought the way it went was just the most clinical, really, you know. He was, instead of running into him and throwing a bunch of shots to, to get the knockout, it was just, he was, he was out. There was no need to give him a good few more punches to the face. He's a pretty guy as well. He's a model, you know. There was no need. There's no need. Very fair of you there. And I guess, what would you like to see next? Because uh, very talented, not, people not always talking about you with some of the, you know, the top names in the division, but I certainly I think you provide problems for anybody in the division. So you know, kind of what do you see next for yourself? I know that 
you work with some people that are pretty good at asking for, for what they want. What, what do you feel like you, you want and need next? Uh, <clears throat> what I'm looking at now is just get two more fights this year. Uh, obviously, try to get some good opponents, some top-ranked opponents, preferably. Uh, well, right now, my mind is just, is just looking to get home, go home to my son, get back to the gym. Uh, as I said, like, that time spent in the Octagon, there's a lot of things to, that, that I can learn from there. There's, there's a good few moments there, and, and just that time you spend there, the feel, the feel for being in there, in the energy, um, I feel like I, I learn a lot from that, you know, and, and I felt... I felt different this time in the cage that I felt in a long time, and uh, or ever. You know, it's 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 changing a little bit for me, and and it's better. You know, it's better than it used to be. Uh, gonna, you decided again not to wrap your hands before the fight, and this time you chose to have small gloves. You usually wear large gloves. Yeah. Why did you choose to have small gloves? Yeah, usually I wear large gloves. I was gonna wear medium this time, and then. Um, uh, and then Makwan was there with his gloves, and they were small. He was wearing wraps, and he was like unsure if he wanted to wear the small gloves. They were hurting him a little bit, so I just I just tried them on. I was just gonna like wear them, you know, kind of wear them out for him, and 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 then I felt like I could wear them. That's you know, once you once you just stretch them a bit, they they feel nice and they're lighter. It feel like a feel like an old school karate glove, and that's what it felt like. I had my my corner, just my dad and, and Yoma stretched the shit out of them <laughs> for like one and a half hour, and they felt amazing. What sort of dif difference does it make for you to have small gloves? Yeah, <clears throat> it's, you know, the reason why I don't wrap my hands is because I get a better feel for, for my hands when I'm working, you know? Uh, I'm grappling, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling my opponent, I like to use my hands. I would, obviously, I, I do, like grappling much better without gloves so the smaller the gloves are the easier it is to get the chokes in and get get your hands slipping them here and there you know get get the grips that you want um the only the only reason like the, the only benefits i feel to the glove is because of the cage if you're holding somebody and they put their back against the cage and your hand is there if you're not wearing a glove that's really going to hurt your hand so and uh, but that small glove didn't make any difference on that. It, it was just better, you know. It just feels more like your hand. You said you felt different in there tonight. Um, we haven't seen you in the octagon since last May. I know you were supposed to headline Belfast in October, but that didn't didn't obviously happen. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you felt so different in there tonight? Um, <clears throat> well, I did feel slightly different my last fight as well, and and then now uh, I don't know what it is exactly. I just think my mind is changing a little bit towards the fight itself, um, the way I'm, the way I'm thinking or not thinking when I'm in there. The, uh, my this the part of my head that deals with strategy is just changed a little bit and I'm using it more you know whether it's before it was like just pure killer instinct you know just just going in there and just doing what I know how to do and doing it as soon as possible you know uh, it's changed a bit now um, and I think that's needed to to go all the way in this but still still I'm always going to look for the finish you know that's it just makes it I think it makes it easier this way instead of just going autopilot you know doing all your moves and maybe getting the decision uh, you know just roughing it out you know be strategic and and get the finish you know finish hey, the fight you said you want to fight uh, another two times is there any uh, we've got a lot of european events coming up this year um any any particular event that kind of stands out that you'd like to get on yeah uh, well i had to go back and um talk about talk with my team about that but yeah definitely I love fighting in Europe Gunnar how important was the loss to Rick's story in terms of your development as a mixed martial artist that fight it looked to me at least as if when you lost that fight it was a case of running out of time 
to actually find the finish. And since then, we've seen a much more ruthless Gunnar Nelson. Is that something that you've paid particular attention to and to push, push the pace a little bit more and maybe be a bit more prepared to really commit to the, to the strikes when the opportunities arise? Yeah, that, that's a good example of, of uh, where I go into a bit of an autopilot mode and just don't really, don't really think. And then I watch the fight and I'm thinking, what the hell was I doing? You know what I mean? Like, um, not that taking anything from Rick Story, he's an amazing fighter, great fighter, very tough. Um, but yeah, I did learn a lot from that fight. Um, and it, yeah, maybe, Maybe you know when it comes to when it comes to just like changing the pace a little bit of the fight, changing your you know you might even do the same moves, the the exact same moves, but just do them differently. Do them do them from a from a in a different pace, different timing. You know, uh, just watch your opponent a little bit and 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 stalk them. You know. And uh, on a on a light note, we had a little bit of a incident last night at the fighter hotel. Everybody was evacuated with the fire alarm. We spoke to your coach, John Kavanagh, um, and uh, there's a bit of humor around how, how you might have reacted to such an incident. Tell us, tell us how it was for you and what your reaction was at the time. I was just screaming scared, you know? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. No, we, we were actually literally about to close our eyes and then this thing goes off and we, we didn't know if it was just in our room. Actually, one of my roommates farted really bad, and we were actually con like discussing if it was that because it was fucking horrendous. Sorry <laughs> for cursing, but uh, uh, yeah, we, we we waited a while actually. We were just thinking it would go off eventually, but the sound was really annoying, wasn't it? It was just uh, finally we like I was just wearing my underwear, about to go to sleep, and I kind of peek out and I see like couple of gentlemen there as lost as I was just kind of looking around seeing what people were doing and then eventually we smelled a little burn and we decided that was maybe a good idea to get the hell out of there yeah here uh, so you said after you caught him uh, you didn't want to hurt him anymore with the punches but was it did it went through your mind that it would be better to have a submission than to have a knockout for your record, for example? No, to be honest, I was just joking with the model thing and all that, but he, I, didn't, I didn't go through my mind. It didn't go through my mind that I didn't want to hurt him or, or it just kind of, it just kind of happened that way. I, yeah, I, I, I punched him, I could see he was, he was out and I just felt like this was, this was the finish that was there, you know? Maybe it's just not as much in me to go and swing my arms and, and, and try to really, you know, hurt him. I guess you could say that, but just, there was no need, as I said, just grab him and, you know, put my hands around his neck and finish the job, you know, it was just clean. And did you, did you turn him? Did I turn him? No, he turned. Or he turned yeah. as he wanted to escape. Yeah, I think, I think he turned. I don't know how how like if his mind was there or what was going on or but i, I yeah he he turned i think thank you thanks very much guys Corey, I know this was a, a big moment for you, and, and uh, obviously you certainly didn't go the way you wanted to go, but uh, talk about the, you know, the experience this week, the main event, and, and, and kind of how you felt in there tonight. Well, like you said, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but uh, it was a great experience for me. Like I told Alex and Jimmy afterwards, you know, thank you for letting me step in the cage with you. And not that I'm over-respecting him, but I respect him as he's the number four ranked guy. You know, he's where I got to get to 
and that's what I got to do to get to the top. You know, he's lost to Rumble and Alex, the two other top guys there. So you can't sit there and beat yourself up and cry about it. Can't cry over spilled milk. I went to the locker room and told my coach, there ain't no reason to be upset. You know, I'm young. Like I said in the interview, I'm the youngest guy ranked right now, I think. 27 years old. I've been doing this in the UFC three years. I've been fighting, I think it'll be four years here shortly. You know, I haven't been doing it long. I got a lot to learn. And uh, also being next to those big guys, like I can see you in the pictures, those are big guys, you know, but it's a lot. <laughs> I'm a big guy in my gym, but I got to do some growing. And that's just something you learn. And I just know I got to go back. Everybody knows I have cardio. Now we just got to work on building size, some natural way, lifting more, eating more, whatever it is. Got to get a good dietitian to get my weight up. So no thought of trying to go down. You're saying you just put, put some more muscle on. Well, we tried the going down thing before. I did the test cut. And, you know, the body fat test all kept saying low as you can go is 201, low as you can go is 202. And I was at 238, 237.7, I was like 8.5% body fat. So I don't have much to go down. I was once a 300-pound man that dropped down to this. So for me to go an extra 20 pounds past 205 to 85, I really kill myself. And I really be getting knocked out every time I get hit. I guess, talk about the feeling there tonight, because every, everybody's a well-rounded martial artist now, but th I think a lot of people thought it would boil down to your grappling abilities versus his striking abilities, and he did a good job with takedown defense. Uh, do you feel like, you know, it was something in your execution, shooting from too far away, or, or do you feel like maybe his takedown defense was just better than you expected it might be? No, can't take it from him. His takedown defense is a lot better than I thought it could be. And also, like I said, he was big. Like I told Coach, one time I got in on that leg, and it was just taken from me, like instantly. I'm so used to getting somebody's leg, if I get my hands on him, I tell him, if I get my hands on your leg, I'm not letting go. Well, I got my hands on his leg, and he just ripped it from me real fast. And that's when I realized, like, this guy, he's got strong legs, so I got to do more to put it together. No excuses. I guess last thing for me, Corey, I mean, what do you want next? I mean, obviously, you got to go back to the drawing board a little bit. But, I mean, do you feel like I mean, you're still pretty early in your career that, that maybe you want to kind of slide back down a little bit, fly under the radar, develop these tools, this muscle that you want to put on, or do you still want these high-level opportunities and these ranked opportunities? I mean, just like when they called me for this fight, I told them I'll fight whoever. You know, I'm ready. I'm in the gym. I'm training. I'm professional. That's what the professionals do. You don't pick and dip and dive. I don't sit here and say, oh, I don't want to fight him because he's too good. I don't want to say I want to fight that guy because he's an easy win. I'm in this sport to be the best eventually. If it ain't today, it's not tomorrow. I'm not the best right now, but eventually I will be. I plan on it before I leave this sport. And wherever it is I got to go, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to do, like they say, you got to do things you've never done to get where you've never been. I've never been a champ. So with that being said, I got to start looking deep and wide, deep, dig down inside of me, figure out what I need to do, talk to my coaches, find somebody to help me, and we're going to keep growing from there. So uh, you walked out to uh, James Brown. It was very hard for me to, stand still, to sit still. Where did that walkout song came from? Um, the walkout song, some of my songs is like between me and my brother and my family. Like I debuted the MC Hammer, Can't Touch This. The story behind that was when I was a kid, I was really sick. I had like some spinal disease or something. When I came home, I thought I was going to be a vegetable. When they played MC Hammer, it brought me back to life, they said. So that was like a new beginning to me. So to come into the UFC, my mom said, it's a new beginning. You know what song you should walk out to. This one being a big title fight, you know, everybody was doubting me. And me and my brother, one of the biggest guys we look up to is James Brown. We love that movie, Get On Up. Like he said, the funk don't quit. My brother texted me this morning and said, the funk don't quit. Meaning no matter what happened, we get right back up and we keep going. Because the funk quit, that's it. You know, and I'm not a quitter. So James Brown was it. I'm super bad. No matter what happens, no matter what happens today, tomorrow, and my past and the future, I'm going to always be me. And I know what I do in the gym. And I know my confidence is up. And I'm going to keep trucking because the funk don't quit. Thanks.
Jimmy. Hello. Back at the O2, main event. Didn't go your way first time round. You more than made up for it this time. How sweet was that? First round, clean knockout. Even you looked like you, re you sort of pulled a face as you walked away. So it was like, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it, it was great to deliver a devastating KO in front of my uh, hometown crowd in London. And um, very satisfying. Talk to us about the, uh, the call out of, first of all, of the world title and also of David Hay. Uh, because that's going to get you a lot of headlines in the next few days, I'm sure. Um, where is your mind at right now? If you were offered both those fights on a plate right now, which one are you taking? I'll probably go for the UFC title fight. Um, the winner out of um, DC and Rumble. But um, at the same time, why not have a fight with, uh, with, with David Hay? Two of the hardest hitters in, in London and everything. And uh, I, think, I think that fight makes sense. Is that something that you discuss with uh, your training partner, Dylan White? Nah, 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 nah. I didn't, I didn't discuss that with him. But, um, you know, Con uh, Conor wants to fight uh, Mayweather. Why, why not have me and David Hay on the same card? How satisfying is it to know that you've now pretty much bridged the gap from the pack to the contenders now? You're in that elite group at the very top of that light heavyweight division. Listen, I, I think, I think I, I've always thought I was, I was in the elite group, but it was just a matter of getting great performances uh, put together and I've done that twice in a row now so uh, you know it's time now it's time now I believe I, my, my next fight will be for the title and um, you know I can't wait I've trained so hard over the years and especially after my last fight I went straight back into training camp and um, you know I haven't really had any rest since my last fight so um, you know it was, it, it, it was great to finally get a clean knockout. Jimmy, do you believe that you can be the next British champion? 100%, 100%. Like I said, one shot, one kill and everything. Me and Rumble Johnson are two of the hardest hitters in the division. If he comes, if he comes through uh, DC, then um, that'll make for a spectacular fight. And obviously, if DC retains the title, how do you see Then I see that, that, Then I see me and DC having a spectacular fight as well. Um, he's a great champion and like, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Let's, let's see what happens with them two and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where, where, we, where we go from there. And Michael Bisping obviously is our first UK champion. Do you take any inspiration from that at all? Yeah, yeah of course. It's, he shows that it can be done by the British, you know, and um, he's, he's done well in his career. He's had a long UFC career as well. It's good to see him finally get the title and everything because he's a great middleweight champion. But, um, you know... I've had a different path from him. I'm a knockout artist and everything. So, you know, I'm a more spectacular fighter than him. So, um, you know, I hope, I hope I get my title shot and you will see me get the belt. And there was a lot of respect between you and Corey after the fight. What was said between you? Corey's a great guy, man. He took, he took, defeat, with, um, he took defeat well. And, you know, I respect that a lot. I respect him coming all the way from... Um, from the US to, to London to into the Lions then to, to face me. And, um, you know, I've got uh, great respect for him. He, he took the fight. A lot of fighters turned me down. Glover Teixeira turned me down. Uh, Ryan Bader turned me down. Shogun turned me down and everything. And he was man enough to step up and, and, uh, and take the fight. So I've got uh, great respect for him. Simon kind of touched on the fact that you took a big step up tonight, man. I think really people really probably give you the respect now that maybe you felt you deserved. I just want to ask you how you felt in the, the whole experience because it seemed like from the moment you kind of were walking in, you were extremely comfortable, you know, soaking it all in, taking a little extra moment. How did this whole experience feel and did it feel different than the last time you were in this headlining slot? It didn't really feel that much different, but being in front of my home crowd, I knew I had to soak it in and use the, en use the crowd as energy as well. And, um, you know, I'm not going to, like I said back before, I'm not, I'm not going to feel that too many times in my career, fighting in front of my home crown and, and, and getting a knockout as well. So I soaked it all in and everything. But at the same time, I knew that I was the better elite fighter than him uh, tonight. And, um, you know, I, just, I, I knew I just had to take my time and he would make the mistake and I, and I made him pay for it. And Corey admitted that your takedown defense was better than he thought it was. I mean, you said yourself, you're a knockout artist, but do you feel like 
maybe you answer some questions or maybe people just don't give you the respect that you deserve for, for the other aspects of your game? Listen, people can say what they want. At the end of the day, when we get in there, it's a fight. It's a, that's what I say to everyone. It's a fight when we get in there. It's not technical. It's not wrestling. It's not boxing. It's a mixed martial arts fight. So, so we knew what he was coming with. We, we knew he'd try and mix up striking with takedowns and we worked tirelessly on, on takedown defense for, for, for this fight. And we, but we do that anyways. You know, and I, I work with the best team in the world, All Stars, Nova Force, Arkedal's Gym. I've got the best trainer, the best training camp and everything. And, uh, you know, it, everything came together. You talk about these big name fighters that turn you down. I mean, this is supposed to be the place where the best fight the best. So when, when you hear that people are turning your, your name down, I mean, what does that make you think about, about these guys? Mate, it makes me think twice that everyone's not like me. E everyone, everyone wants to you know, dodge people and, and hold on to their, to their spot. I'm not, I'm not bothered about where I'm ranked in the world and everything. And um, I'm just worried about fighting the best people in the world and, and, and being a natural, original champion. You know, and that's what, that's what, um, that's, that, that's what I'm working towards. Jimmy, it, yesterday at the fighter Q&A, Dan Hardy mentioned that if you won tonight, you should call out John Jones. John Jones obviously going to be returning for him from his suspension. There, there hasn't seemed to have been an answer on how to beat John Jones uh, clinically inside the octagon. Do you think you possess that answer? I'm not interested in John Jones. John Jones takes steroids and that. He's been banned for steroids and that. He's the great, it, it, before, I was a big fan of John Jones. The things he's done, in, he's done in the octagon and everything, but he's been suspended for a year or, or something and he, he's, he's had issues before. He's a great fighter. I'm a, I would uh, greatly respect him, but he's been done for steroids, and that taints everything that he's done. So, um, you know, I'm not really interested. When he comes back, I'll fight him. No problem, you know. But um, I'm, 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 I'm focused on the belt right now, and it's, that's going to be the winner out of DC and Rumble Johnson. And for you, after the last loss, it seems like there's been a real fire underneath you to go out there and, and prove it. And you've got two amazing finishes. What's the difference now? Why, why is it now that we're seeing a better Jimmy Manuel than ever before? Because I've, I learned from, from my losses. I learned from, I learned from my loss to, to Gustafsson. I learned from my loss to Rumble Johnson. I, and I've, put, I've made those things correct now and everything. And now I'm fighting the best in the world. Hi, Jimmy. <coughs> uh, you briefly... You made it known that you want the winner of DC and Rumble next, but with John Jones' cloud looming over the division, are you worried that he's uh, going to overlook you? Are you going to get overlooked, sorry? Um, possibly, possibly, but to me, whatever happens, happens. I will be fighting the elite fighters in the world, um, and uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. He, he's back in July or something, so they're, they're fighting next month, so the fight could be made before he comes back anyway, so... You know, we'll see what happens. I'm going to fly to Vegas to meet, to meet with Dana after this, and uh, we'll see what happens. And if they offer you, Jones, is that a fight that you'd be willing to take? No problem. No problem. I was, listen, I, I don't turn down anybody. I'm not scared of anybody. Everyone bleeds. Everyone feels pain and everything. And I've proved that during my career that I'm not scared to fight anybody because it's mixed martial arts. You know, everyone, everyone feels pain. Everyone bleeds the same. And I accept if you're not taking steroids. That's, that's, what, that's what I've got a problem with, you know. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I'll fight, I'll fight John Jones, no problem. And uh, you jumped right back into training camp pretty quickly after you, the win over OSP, and uh, obviously you've just fought tonight. When would you ideally like to return? Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like a short break just, just to get away from training and go on holiday with my family and stuff and enjoy life a little bit, for, not, not for too long, and everything I know there's big fights coming up now, so um, you know I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be back in camp soon. Thanks very much. So Jimmy, um, we're, you were talking about, uh, or you're calling out the, the 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 winner of DC versus Johnson. So who of those two do you think um, matches up better for you? Um, I don't know. Me and Rumble Johnson are the two of the hardest hitters, or the most exciting fighters in the light heavyweight division. And I'd love to get a rematch with him and that to avenge my loss because I made some silly mistakes with my weight and, 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 and my striking as well. So um, I'd like to avenge that loss against the most feared man, in the, probably, in, in, probably in the UFC roster and that in, in, in Rumble Johnson. 
And uh, but then again, uh, D, uh, DC's a great champion. He's feared and everything. He's beat uh, the guy I'm talking about. He's beat Alex. He's beat. He's beat a lot of the guys in the division. So I'd like to fight him as well. You know and. Um, you know, I don't. To, to me, I don't care. I don't care who it is because uh, DC is more wrestling based, and that uh, Rumble's more striking based and everything. So to me, I don't care. It's mixed martial arts, you know. Okay. So you just told us that you learned from your losses. So what would you do differently if you are fighting Anthony Johnson the next time? <laughs> it's a bit of a secret. <laughs> no, I, 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 I know the mistakes I made. My team know, know, know the mistakes I made in that fight. And everything. My strength and conditioning uh, team know the make mistakes I made for that fight. So everything was wrong for that for that fight, but I still, I still took the fight anyway. I took the fight on like four, four and a half weeks' notice and everything. So I was training more for cardio than any other technical stuff. I just come off a big operation on my knee and stuff like that, but I took the fight anyways. So um, you know, I, I'd like a proper training camp for for that, and uh, you know that's what will happen. Thank you. Jim? Any questions, Jim? <laughs> um, I'm not, I don't know. I haven't even looked at my phone. I've got so many messages and that, but I might, I might go out, I'm not sure. But um, I might celebrate with a holiday with the family. Have you been told you want to take bonus? Yes. Did you like, did you like the knockout? I, f I think the powers that be like the knockout again, so um, you know they rewarded me with a bonus, and I'm thankful for that. It's near. I think I think that probably tops that that probably tops it. Especially it being in um, in my hometown of London, getting a clean knockout like that, and everything that probably tops tops the greatest moments. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy, uh, last one for me. Is there a message that you want to send to uh, DC and Rumble? Uh, no, they're two great fighters. They're two of the best fighters in the world, and I'm, you know, I'm not one for trash talking or anything. And uh, you know, we do, I do my talking in, in the octagon, and that. So, um, you know, just uh, get ready for get ready for a big challenge coming your way. Thanks again, man. Is that it? Thank you very much. You could tell them that I've been from hell and back When the heat is on, I fire back One shot is all it takes That's a terrifying man Cormier mauls people You could tell them that I've been from hell and back When the heat is on, I fire back You the man, baby, but I'm coming for you Let's go! Let's go.